week, we're about to start. Father is getting ready. Um, Viva San Siberio. And thank you, everyone, for coming to St. Anne's and celebrating the Mass in honor of our patron saint, San Siberio. We know that work, family, responsibilities, and health challenges can get in the way of attending this special Mass. Your attendance is noted and appreciated. We hope that you and your family and friends will also join us at the San Siberio Shrine in Dover Plains next week, Sunday, June 25th. Please do your best to attend and continue our Protestant traditions. Today there will be two collections. The second collection is the one that will go towards the San Siberio Shrine. Please be as generous as you can. We appreciate it. The celebrant of today's Mass is Father Carrozza, and we'd like to thank him for taking the time to help us celebrate this Mass once again this year. After Mass, there will be a procession, and I hope you will all join us. As we listen to the word of the Lord, please keep anyone who needs healing in your thoughts and prayers, especially Father DeFazio, Deacon Sal Mazzella, and Enza Conte. Today's Mass is in memory of Domenico and Anna Muccio, Agostino and Elena Canti, as well as Assunta Scarogni, who recently passed away. The board extends our deepest condolences to the Scarogni family. May she rest in eternal peace. Please remember to turn off your cell phones. Thank you and Viva San Siberia. Signore, mandato dal Padre a salvare i contriti di cuore, abbi pietà di noi. Signore, Cristo, che sei venuto a chiamare i peccatori, abbi pietà di noi. Cristo, pietà. Signore, che intercedi per noi presso il Padre, abbi pietà di noi. Signore, pietà. Dio Onnipotente, abbia misericordia di noi, perdoni i nostri peccati e ci conduca alla vita eterna. Amen. Preghiamo. Dio grande e misericordioso, che hai scelto il Papa San Silverio a presiedere il tuo popolo per edificarlo con il magistero e la santità della vita, costudisci i pastori della tua chiesa 
e guido di sulla via della salvezza eterna. Per il nostro Signore Gesù Cristo, tuo Figlio che è Dio, e vive e regni con te nell'unità dello Spirito Santo per tutti i secoli dei secoli. Amen. Bless the Lord, the Shebna, Shebna, master of the palace. I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On the day I will summon my servant, Alekim and Alekai, I will cloth him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give him over to your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitant of Jerusalem and to the house of Ju Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Helikim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in his short spot to a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Jesus Christ. Do you ever get the feeling that the world is biased against good people? That it seems to favor those who do evil? People who go out and do all the wrong things seem to triumph and people love them and laud them and they get all sorts of riches and glory and the good people who go out trying to do what's right, trying to be what God had created us to be, get stepped on and kicked around and spit on. Well, if you felt that way, and I'm sure we all have at some point or another, it's nothing brand new to our time. It's been going on ever since uh, original sin. In fact, many of the Psalms speak about you know, the same thing. Why do the evil triumph and the good suffer? And it goes, it's part of our fallen world. Because of original sin, everything is turned upside down. And good people over the millennia have had to struggle to do what's right. And sometimes the temptation when we see other people doing wrong things, being evil, and getting their own way, and getting all this riches and all this popularity, sometimes the temptation for us is to go right along with them and say, well, you know, I'm going to have to do what they do if I want to live in this world. Biggest mistake we could ever make, because the Lord came to correct that whole situation, but not the way we would do it. He came to remind us that our time here on earth is only temporary, and how we live here on earth following Him will determine how we live with Him in eternal life. And whether we live 10 years or 100 years, it's just a bat of an eyelash compared to all of eternity. And those who live for this world and manipulate the world for themselves, but don't live in service of Christ and others, well, they will not be reigning in glory with Jesus and His kingdom, at least not without a lot of penance beforehand. And so when you get one of those days, when you feel like, you know, what's going on here? I'm trying to do what's right. I'm trying to do it, and everybody hates me for it, or whatever it may be. First of all, remember you're not alone. That the world has been, that's been happening in the world ever since Cain, the evil one, slew Abel, the just one. And that the Lord came to save us from that. But also, I think we can take special comfort in our beloved patron here, San Silverio, when we look at what he went through in his life, as I'm sure many of you know the story. And he was elected Pope in 536, and when he was elected Pope, there was a deacon by the name of Vigilius who was furious because he thought he should be the next Pope. And he didn't humbly accept that, well, maybe this is the will of, the, of God, that God wants Silverio to be Pope and not myself. No, he decided he was going to become Pope, come hell or high water, as the expression goes. And if they didn't elect him, he was going to make sure that you know, he became the Pope. And so he set on this wonderful scheme that would fit in any great movie. You know, the, the intrigues and everything of sending out false letters in Silverius' name. Because at the time, there was the political struggle between the Byzantine emperor, who was in control of most of Italy, and the Ostrogoths who had come in uh, 50, 60 years earlier and had conquered Rome. And there was the struggle for power between the Ostrogoths and the Byzantines. And the, uh, Vigilius went out claiming that uh, Silverio got the uh, Ostrogoths to deliberately make sure and buy his election to Pope so that there would be a pro-Gothic uh, Pope on the, on the uh, Sea of St. Peter who would welcome him in. and. He claimed that Silverio left the gates of Rome open one night so that the Goths could come in and destroy the city, even though the Byzantines had, were in control of the city. And the, um, even though uh, Silverius accepted Belisarius, who was the general representing Justinian, the Byzantine emperor, accepted him, nevertheless, as you know, people love their fake news and their stories and so many different things float around that it's actually even difficult to know exactly what the truth was through it all. What we do know through it all was that Vigilius went out and made sure he became Pope. 
And he had Silverio completely discredited, again, as I said, by writing those fake letters about him, you know, claiming to have been signed by Silverio, which he, of course, knew nothing about. Every historian admits that those letters were all completely forged. And he got the help of two women that were in his pocket. One was uh, Belisarius, the general's wife, and the empress in, in Constantinople, because they were also followers of a heresy called the Monophysite heresy, which basically said that Jesus had only one nature. You and I, of course, Orthodox Catholic belief is that Jesus is, has one, is one person but has two natures, a human nature and a divine nature. Well, they figured that with Vigilius as Pope, he would give all the support to the Monophysites and bring the church in that direction. So the women conspired against Silverio and they had this mock trial of him where they accused him of, uh, of heresy, of blasphemy, and they publicly stripped him of all of his papal regalia, put him in a simple monk's robe, treated him very shabbily, and then shipped him off to exile into Greece. And while he was in Greece, the bishop there heard of the story and appealed to the emperor. And Justinian, who knew nothing about this, was furious. So he came to the pope's defense, and he, he sent Silverio back to Rome with letters from Justinian authorizing an official trial, saying, I want there to be a proper official trial. And if the Pope has in fact done something wrong, then he must suffer the punishment for it. But if not, and he's found to be guilty, he is to be restored to the See of Peter with all of his honors back in, uh, in place. Well, as of course news of this broke out to Vigilius beforehand, and when the entourage arrived in Italy, you know, bringing all the messages from Justinian, they just ignored it, and they just took you know, Silverio and sent him out to Palmarola, where he was starved to death. And if the story ended right there, here on earth, we'd say, poor Silverio, he suffered and Vigilius won the glory. But of course, the Lord reminds us that earth is not the end of the story, heaven is. And you know the story of a couple of centuries later, there were some sailors out, some fishermen who were um, caught in a storm and they were very frightened and they claimed to have had a vision of San Silverio saying, come to Panza. And so they did, they made it safely to Panza, and from that time on, his fame spread, and he was a canonized saint, and became the patron that we honor to this very day. And so, today we have San Silverio, we have this beautiful mass, we have all the flowers we brought in, we've come out with our grand procession, Sunday we're going to have another mass, and a procession there, and a big feast and celebration, and we have all this in honor of San Silverio. And where is the statue of Virgilia? Where is his parade? Where is his procession? Where are people bringing honor and tribute to him? Nobody even knows where he was buried. Actually, he even suffered the same um, fate of being removed from the throne by the empress when he went against the Monophysites and decided to become an Orthodox Catholic. And so he too suffered at, by the hand of his own um, deceit, deceit and ways. And God gives victory in heaven and then sometimes even much later on to those who are faithful to him. San Silverio, I think if he were to be able to come in here today and tell us his own story, I'm sure he would say, don't worry, hang in there, because even if they mistreat you in this life, if we do it for the Lord, he will glorify us in heaven. And so, today we celebrate not Virgilius the Pope that nobody remembers, but San Silverio, the Pope and martyr, patron saint of Panza, and one who has inspired us down to this very age. Today, as we celebrate San Silverio, let us remember what he had to endure, and let it strengthen us in these very difficult days where the world is starving for Christ, and we as Christians are called to go out and bring Christ to a world that desperately needs him and doesn't want him. And that's just like the ancient Roman world where the apostles went out, to a world that needed Christ, but many of them didn't want him. Don't be afraid. Go out, bear witness to Christ, be proud of him, be bold in your Catholic faith. Be a bold Catholic, be proud of that, and remember, whenever things are getting difficult and people might be disliking you, even hating you, because you are faithful to Christ, remember, San Silverio suffered the same fate, and he is now in glory with the Lord, and so will we when our life on this earth is over. See you, Lodato Fratelli carissimi, imploriamo la misericordia del Padre per l'intercessione dei Santi che hanno testimoniato 
l'adesione a Cristo nell'esercizio nell della carità eroica. Rispondiamo, ascoltaci, Signore. Ascoltaci. Perché la comunità cristiana, stampa per la dottrina e per i sacramenti della fede, esprime nella vita dei fedeli e dei pastori la perenne fecondità dello Spirito. <coughs> Preghiamo. Ascoltaci, ascoltaci Signore. Signore. Perché la famiglia, consacrata dal patto nuziale, diventi scuola di vita evangelica e vivaio di speciale vocazione al servizio del popolo di Dio. Preghiamo. Ascoltaci, ascoltaci Signore. Signore. Perché i giovani, portatori di speranza, sentono il desiderio della santità come primavera dello spirito. Preghiamo. Ascoltaci, Signore. Perché gli inabili, i malati e tutti i sofferenti vivono l'esperienza del dolore in unione con Cristo, merito dei corpi e delle anime. Preghiamo. Ascoltaci, Signore. Perché noi tutti, membri del popolo di Dio, fedeli agli impegni del battesimo, esprimiamo nel rifiuto del male e nelle opere della carità l'imitazione di Cristo, uomo nuovo. Preghiamo. Ascolti, Gio Signore. E per il riposo delle anime di Agostino Conte, Elena Conte, Domenico Curcio e Anna Curcio, per cui celebriamo questa messa. Preghiamo. Ascolti, Gio Signore. Padre Santo, guarda la tua Chiesa, alle cui mani hai affidato il Vangelo del tuo Figlio. Fa che non le manchi mai il frutto e il segno della santità, perché possa annunziare con la forza dello Spirito la parola che illumina e che salva. Per Cristo nostro Signore. Amen. Amen.
fratelli, perché il mio e il vostro sacrificio sia tradito a Dio Padre Onnipotente. Il Signore riceve dalle tue mani questo sacrificio. Però, però, è la verità di tutta la sua Santa Chiesa. Ti offriamo, Signore, questo sacrificio di lode in onore dei tuoi santi nella serena fiducia di essere liberati dai mali presenti e futuri e di ottenere la realtà che ci hai promesso per Cristo nostro Signore Amen. il Signore sia con voi e con il tuo spirito in alto i nostri cuori sono rivolti al Signore rendiamo grazie al Signore nostro Dio e cosa buona e giusta e veramente cosa buona e giusta nostro dovere e fonte di salvezza lodarti e ringraziarti sempre Dio Onipotente ed Eterno per Cristo nostro Signore Amen. tu doni alla tua Chiesa la gioia di celebrare la festa di San Silverio con i suoi esempi la rafforzi con i suoi insegnamenti la maestri con la sua intercessione la proteggi per questo dono della vita benevolenza, uniti agli angeli e ai santi, con voci unanime, cantiamo l'inno della tua lode. e continui a radunare intorno a te un popolo che da un confine all'altro della terra offra al tuo nome lo sacrificio perfetto. Ora ti preghiamo umilmente, manda il tuo spirito a santificare i doni che ti offriamo perché diventino il corpo e il sangue di Gesù Cristo, tuo figlio e nostro Signore che ci ha comandato di celebrare questi misteri. Nella notte in cui fu tradito, egli prese il pane, ti rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione, lo spezzò, lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse, prendete e mangiatene tutti, questo è il mio corpo offerto in sacrificio per voi. Dopo la cena, allo stesso modo, prese il calice, si rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione, lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse, prendete e bevetene tutti. Questo è il calice del mio sangue, per la nuova ed eterna alleanza, versato per voi e per tutti in remissione dei peccati. Fate questo in memoria di me. Mistero della fede gloriosamente risorto e acceso al cielo, nell'attesa della sua venuta, ti offriamo, Padre, in rendimento di grazie, questo sacrificio vivo e santo. Guarda con amore e riconosci nella offerta della tua Chiesa la vittima immolata per la nostra redenzione. E a noi che ci nutriamo del corpo e sangue del tuo Figlio, 
Dona la pienezza dello Spirito Santo perché diventiamo in Cristo un solo corpo e un solo spirito. Egli affaccia di noi un sacrificio per regni a te gradito perché possiamo ottenere il regno promesso insieme con i tuoi eletti per la Beata Maria, Vergine, Madre di Dio, con i tuoi santi apostoli, i gloriosi martiri, San Silverio, Sant'Anna e tutti i santi, nostri intercessori preso di te. Per questo sacrificio di riconciliazione, dona, Padre, pace al salvezza al mondo intero. Conferma nella fede e nell'amore la tua chiesa pellegrina sulla terra, il tuo servo, il nostro Papa Francesco, il nostro Vescovo, Tim Vescovo Timothy, il Collegio Episcopale, tutto il clero e il popolo che tu hai redento. Ascolta la preghiera di questa famiglia che ci ha convocato alla tua presenza. Ricongiungi a te, Padre Misericordioso, tutti i tuoi figli ovunque dispersi. Accogli nel tuo regno i nostri fratelli defunti e tutti i giusti che in pace con te hanno lasciato questo mondo. Concede anche a noi di ritrovarci insieme a godere per sempre della tua gloria, in Cristo nostro Signore, per mezzo del quale tuo Dio doni al mondo ogni bene. Per Cristo, con Cristo e in Cristo, a te Dio Padre Onnipotente, nell'unità dello Spirito Santo, ogni onore e gloria per tutti i secoli dei secoli. la parola del Salvatore e formati al suo divino insegnamento, osiamo dire, Padre nostro che sei nei cieli, sia santificato il suo nome, venga il tuo regno, sia fatta la tua volontà, come in cielo e così in terra. Dacci oggi il nostro pane quotidiano e rimetti a noi i nostri debiti, come noi rimettiamo i nostri debitori e non ci indurre in tentazione. Ma liberaci, ma liberaci dal male. Dal male. Liberaci, o oh Signore, da tutti i mali. Concede la pace ai nostri giorni. E con l'aiuto della tua misericordia vivremo sempre liberi dal peccato e sicuri da ogni torbamento, nella tesa che si compia la beata speranza e venga il nostro Salvatore Gesù Cristo. Tu è il regno, tu la potenza, la gloria dei secoli. Signore Gesù Cristo, che vi ha detto ai tuoi apostoli, vi lascio la pace, vi do la mia pace. Non guardare <coughs> i nostri peccati, ma alla fede della tua Chiesa, e dona la unità e pace secondo la tua volontà, tu che vivi e regni nei secoli dei secoli. Amen. La pace del Signore sia sempre con voi. E con, con il tuo Spirito. spirito. Scambiatevi un segno di pace.
Arabia. Signore Dio nostro, la comunione ai tuoi santi misteri susciti in noi la fiamma di carità che alimentò incessantemente, incessantemente di vita la vita di San Silverio e lo spinse a consumarsi per la tua chiesa, per Cristo nostro Signore. Amen. Call for our extraordinary minister of public communion who is to bring the Lord Jesus to our home bound. Our, who is the extraordinary minister bringing communion to the home Help them know that although they cannot be with us in person, they are still in our hearts and in our prayers. Saint, Saint Severio, Saint Joseph, and the Blessed Mother, and then Father Opio came in. <coughs> Remember that. The roots are there, but don't cut the tree down, ever. And use people who have college sons and daughters, let them help us grow the shrine. Let them put it together and say they could do something better and more prosperous and keep the ash fork rolling. Thank you and many more healthy holidays. After Mass, we're going to have a procession and uh, hope you'll be able to join us. We wish you a very pleasant day and see you on the 25th. Thank you, Madame Ibe. Il Signore sia con voi. E con il tuo spirito. Vi benedica di ogni potente, Padre, e Figlio e Spirito Santo. La messa è finita, andate in pace. Grazie a Dio.
Good job, man. blessed with the courage to die and witness to Christ in the gospel. Through your example, may we be filled with the courage to press, profess our faith in Jesus Christ and to serve him with generosity in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your, with your spirit. spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Evita San Silverio. Evita San Silverio.